Hello all, welcome to Docker Basics to Brilliance course. My name is Castro Kiran. In this lecture course, we are going to talk about in detail concepts that are related to Docker, starting from the very fundamental basics and to the advanced level of Docker understanding concept. This lecture series will be consisting of at least 25 to 30 lectures with an overall project that includes the combination of the Docker, Jenkins, and the other tools such as Maven and GitHub. So in this lecture course, we are also going to see what are the fundamental concepts that are required in order to become a DevOps engineer with respect to the Docker concepts. So in this video, we are going to talk about two of the important fundamental concepts before we start learning about the Docker. So firstly, we'll be understanding the application architecture, and then we'll be seeing a difference between a monolithic architecture and a microservice based architecture. So to understand the application architecture, I am going to take a scenario here. Let's say that we are going to develop or as a developers, we are trying to develop an application and that application I'm going to call it as a Netflix application. Now for any application, we will have three major components. The first one is known as front end component. The second one is known as back end component. And the last one is known as a database component. Now for any type of application, these three components are very much essential in order to deploy the application into the servers. Now let's see what will be there in the front end components. Front end components are something where the users will be experiencing the user interface. So technically the front end is something that users will experience. And that's why we call it as user experience or UI and UX. So basically for any application, this front end component will be designed by using Angular, HTML, CSS scripts, or React.js. These are the fundamental things that will be used in order to develop the front end of any kind of application. It need not be a Netflix application. It can be any type of application. Now, this front end is something that we usually see whenever we log into any particular type of application. Suppose, let's say I am willing to log into the Netflix application. Now, whenever I want to log in to the Netflix application, I have to enter the username and the password so that I'll be able to browse the movies, the documentaries, or any kind of related things that are available in the Netflix application. That's actually a front end component. Now, back end component is something where our application will be available or application source code will be available. Usually, this back end component is again divided into three levels. The first level is known as web components. Now, what is the importance of working with web components? The importance is these web components handles the interaction between the user and the server. So what is meant by server here? Server is nothing but an EC2 instance, especially if you are talking about the AWS cloud. In AWS, we are going to launch the EC2 instances. So that's basically a server. So web components are responsible to provide the interaction between the user and the server where our application components are available. That's the first component that will be there in the backend. The second component that will be there in the backend is known as a business component. Now, the business components functionality contains the core logic of the application. That's basically the source code of the application will be available in the business components. And then comes the next component, which is known as persistent component. Persistent components are something which are responsible for data storage and the data retrieval factors in combination with the database component. So these are the three major components that are available in the back end of an application. Web component is responsible for the interaction between the user and the server. Business components consist of the core logic of the application, which is basically the source code of the application and persistent component is responsible to communicate with the database in order to store the data and to retrieve the data. Usually in the real time scenarios, the backend components are designed based upon the programming languages such as Java, Python, .NET, Node.js, and PHP. Of, apart from these programming languages, we can use multiple programming languages in, our, in the process of developing the backend of an application. And the last component is known as database component. 
usually the database component is something which is used in order to store the data that is coming from the application so we have different types of databases that are available such as mysql database oracle database mongodb postgres sql like this we are having the different databases that are available in the market on a large scale for any application these three components are very much important the front end back end and database now in each stage the different types of developers will be available and in each level the different programming languages will be used in order to develop the full scale of an application that's actually that will be there in any kind of application and that is why we call it as application architecture so application architecture basically consists of front end back end and database each one of these are developed by a separate set of developers by using a separate set of programming languages now let's understand what is meant by a monolithic architecture and what is meant by a microservice based architecture so to understand the concept of monolithic architecture let me take a scenario here the scenario is let's say you are developing the application called netflix application now we know that in netflix we have different sub categories such as we have movies category documentaries category comedies category animations category and sci-fi category apart from this we also have multiple but i am just taking couple of them now here for movies related we are going to write our developers will write a separate set of code for documentaries related there will be a separate set of code likewise for each one of these categories there will be a separate set of user interface separate set of code that will be written now on a large scale for each one of these component there is a separate set of code which is written by the developers now as a devops engineer what we have to do is we have to take the complete code of the application and we have to deploy that code into the servers that's called as deploying the code into the server now here one thing that we need to understand is whatever the code that is available for the all categories such as movies documentaries comedies animations and sci-fi all the codes of these individual categories are kept in a single server or in a single instance for all the code that is available in a single server there will be a one database that will be connected to this and that database is responsible to store the application logs so in a nutshell monolithic architecture is something where the whole application related code will be deployed into a single server with a single database connected to it so everything will be available in the single server itself so that's called as a single code base so what does it mean by single code base the entire application is written as a single unit of code and this single unit of code includes the user interface code the business logic code and the data access layer and it is basically a centralized deployment that means the application is deployed as a whole single unit that is what we are saying here so we are deploying the entire code into a single server and if you want to do any kind of changes for any set of the code the entire application has to be redeployed again that's actually one of the disadvantages with respect to the monolithic architecture and with monolithic architecture there will be a single database which we are going to call it as shared database because for movies related code we have a single database for documentaries related code we have the same database for comedies related code we have the same database that means it is having or the monolithic architecture will have a shared database that means all the functionalities of the application will be sharing a single set of database only now let's look at what are the advantages of working with monolithic architecture the one major advantage of working with monolithic architecture is it is very simple in order to develop the application so it is also easier to set up and it is also easy for small scale projects for the large scale projects the monolithic architecture is not preferred and if you want to do any kind of changes changes can be done at a very fast pace to implement as everything in one place that's one advantage in in a nutshell it is very simple for the developers with respect to the monolithic architecture and the other advantage is it has more effective communication what does it mean by effective communication 
since everything is there within the same code database or code base communication between the different parts of the application will become very easy in the monolithic architecture and coming with disadvantages of a monolithic architecture it has very limited scalability so it is very difficult to scale the application when you want to grow the application for a large scale features and whenever you want to add any kind of new features or if you are handling capacity of the application gets increased then it becomes a troublesome process in the process of doing the scalability of the application and the other disadvantage is there are many tr troubleshooting issues that might arise when you are doing the code changes for any set of category let's say you are changing the code with respect to the documentaries related category now in that case there is a problem that comes with the entire application as well and here the other major disadvantage of the monolithic architecture is it has very slow development process for large scale projects so usually this monolithic architecture is something which is most commonly used for small scale projects so in a nutshell the advantages of using the monolithic architecture are it is very simple in the development process and it will also have the efficient communication the disadvantages of monolithic architecture are it has limited scalability you cannot scale as per your requirement so that's why it is having limited scalability and the maintenance challenges will be very high and the deployment or the development of the monolithic architecture for large scale process will be very slow and it is also not recommended for large scale architecture that's about the monolithic architecture now let's understand about the microservice based architecture in microservice based architecture i again i am going to take the same netflix application in the netflix application we have different categories like movies documentaries comedies animations sci-fi now here also for movies related there will be a separate set of code for documentaries related there will be a separate set of code like that for each category that is available in the netflix application there will be a separate set of code and there will also be a separate set of user interface now in the monolithic architecture what we are doing is the entire code for all these application we are deploying in a single ec2 instance or in a single server but whereas in a microservice based architecture movies related code will be deployed into a separate server documentaries related code will be deployed into a separate server like that each category of the application code will be deployed into each category of the set of servers okay movies related code will be available only in the movies related server now since the code is available in an individual server there will be a separate set of databases for each category that is available in the application so here movies related code will be available in movies related server and whatever the movies related data that is coming from the application that will be stored in the movies related database only so here what we need to understand is in microservice based architecture for every component or for every category that is available in the application there will be a separate set of code and this set of code will be deployed into a separate set of server and for this set of server we will be having a separate code database that's why it is called as microservice based architecture so to keep it in a nutshell each part of the application is deployed on each server with a separate database connected to each server that's why this microservice based architecture is something that is really preferred in the real time scenarios so to understand this the microservice based architecture is completely an independent based services what does it mean by that the application functionality in the microservice based architecture is divided into smaller components and self contained services what does it mean by self contained services here i have the code for movies so this movie related code i am deploying in a separate server and for this server a separate database is available that's called as self contained services and the entire application is divided into the smaller fragments or smaller services each service will be having a well defined purpose and communication with each other services is possible by using apis what does it mean by apis application programming interfaces and it also has the microservice architecture also has the database choices what does it mean by that 
services can have their own databases depending upon their the specific need and each service can be independently deployed can be independently scaled and can be independently updated without affecting the other services that are there in the application that's the advantage of working with microservice based architecture and in the microservice based architecture the scalability of the application will be very easy because let's say i have i am getting more traffic towards movies now tomorrow if i need some extra servers only for movies category the scalability of the movies related code will be very easy for me not like in monolithic architecture and here the faster development process will happen because the development teams can work on different services at the same time which leads to the faster development of the whole application and in the microservice based architecture the improved maintainability will also be there and hence the troubleshooting becomes easier whenever any kind of issues that gets arised in this type of architecture along with the advantages it also has its own disadvantages as well one of the disadvantages is it has more complex scenario let's say you have the movie related code this movie related code you have to perfectly deploy in the movie related server only and also for this movie related code and the server you need to attach a separate database so this becomes a little troublesome work when you are working with microservice based architecture that's why i am calling it as increased complexity what is meant by increased complexity the overall system architecture becomes more complex due to the distributed nature of the services and communications overhead that's increased complexity and the other disadvantage is the development overhead what does it mean it means that setting up the infrastructure and communicating com establishing the communication between the different services requires additional effort so that the application will run in a smooth way now if you ask me which one is best whether monolithic architecture or microservice based architecture so let us address couple of questions with respect to the comparison between the monolithic architecture and the microservice based architecture the first question is which is good either monolithic or microservice based in my view both of the architectures are very good but it all depends on the type and the scale of the application for small scale applications the monolithic architecture is good and for large scale applications the microservice based architecture is very good now the next question is what is the suitability factors with respect to the monolithic and microservice based architecture as i was mentioning for if you are having a limited usage then monolithic architecture is very good such as the student portals the newspaper websites are some of the examples of monolithic based architecture and if you have large set of users then it is recommended to go for microservice based architecture suppose let's say the netflix application the prime application the hotstar application all these applications are having large user database when the users are limited we will go for monolithic based architecture and when the users are at a large scale then we'll go for microservice based architecture so this is about a brief understanding on the application architecture and also a difference between the monolithic architecture and a microservice based architecture in the next lecture we are going to talk about another concept that is available in the docker basics to brilliance course thank you